Lawrence, thanks so much for joining me today. Appreciate you coming on. Yeah, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm excited we finally get to do this. I know, I know, I am too. It's funny, you know, you and I crossed paths years ago at The Blaze, and it has been really fun to watch your trajectory, your growth, what's been happening in your life, and you know, you've landed in a really amazing place at Fox News. What has that experience been like for you? Oh man, it's uh, it's been an exciting experience. You know, I've, I've had the opportunity to, you know, grow in different ways. Um, obviously, starting off as a contributor, and then from there, um, you know, becoming Sean Hannity's correspondent to, you know, doing my own show on Saturday to now this incredible opportunity to. Be on, be on America's number one cable news show. So, you know, I, I, I guess the, you know, the biggest thing I would say is that the grind never stopped. <laughs> um, you know, just taking advantage of every opportunity and kind of just going with it because, you know, a, a lot of times you, you get into these roles um, and you, in your head, is going to go a certain way. And, you know, I think the secret sauce of media is kind of taking advantage of these opportunities and making it your own. Um, you know, I, one thing that I've taken great pride in is the network has allowed me to grow before everyone. Um, you know, it's not one of those things that you can pull someone into the on, onto the service road, take them off the highway and say, hey, we're going to you know, groom you, grow and mentor you and then get back on the highway. I've, I've kind of had the opportunity to stay on the highway the entire time as I made mistakes and as I fi found who I am as a person and what beliefs I have. And, you know, they, they've they stuck with me through the entire journey. And I've had, you know, great mentors like Dana Perino and, you know, Sean Hannity, who made me his correspondent that have kind of not even put guardrails on, but share with me their experiences along the way. And, and we just, we just do it, man. Just do it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's not an easy, it's not an easy journey. People see you, they see people on TV, they see sort of the, the, the glitz and the glam and the excitement of the job. It's not, it's not easy. It's not easy getting into it. It's not easy doing it. And as you were saying, there's a lot of learning that happens along the way. When you think back to years ago, the media you were doing and sort of where you started, could you have ever imagined that it would have landed here where you are right now? Not this direction. You know, uh, you know, we have a mutual friend, Dana Lash, who gave me this incredible opportunity back when I was um, on another network. And, um, you know, I was doing <laughs> man on the street stuff for her. Um, and then uh, Glenn Beck also um you know and i was a part of dana show every single day and you know i was a college kid so yeah i, I remember I, that I, you know i i did not know i had hopes that um i would someday reach the national level and i was appearing on fox but i wasn't hosting on fox and then i left um the, dana and glenn and then i ran campus reform so i was running a publication so you know, there was, you know, everyone says that, um, you know, they want to reach national, right, and do a show. But this wasn't what I imagined was going to be the pathway. It was, a, it was this non-traditional route. And, you know, I when I started appearing on Fox, I was 21. I'm 31 today. So it, there were so many roller coasters and so different, you know, so many different, you know, trajectories that I. I went through and valleys that I went to to arrive at this place. I don't know if anyone could have predicted this. You know, Sean Hannity always says that I saw it. Uh, Lauren Pedersen, who was just a, she was just a producer on Fox and Friends at the time. Now she runs Fox Business and she's the president of All Talent. They said that they saw the path, but for me, I, I don't, I don't understand how anyone could see it with all these different ways and different shows that I was on. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, look, and, and you've always had a passion. You've been a really hard worker over the years, and I think that has paid <clears> off. But you're also a person of faith, right? You're you're a Christian. And oh, faith, yeah. I mean, following faith is when you actually do it and you go all in, you end up on the craziest journey sometimes, right? Where you're like, yeah. how did I, how did this even happen? So what role for you, especially being young, I mean, you're still really young. Like what, what role has faith played in your journey? You know, 
faith, the faith walk, knowing who God is, right, and knowing who Jesus Christ, accepting him into your life, for me, that wasn't the hard part for me. Because I grew up in it, I come from generations of pastors, you know, my mom's a preacher, grandparents are. So the gospel at large, you know, knowing who Christ is and accepting him to my heart, um, that wasn't a hard part because that's all I know, right? The actual gospel of, you know, trusting him as you walk this path of life was it has been difficult um because you know you get into the world and you you do this experiment called life and you understand the challenges of life so going through that um and understanding it i didn't start to really um understand that until i left home and i moved to dc then i moved to new york and then all those things that you grew up learning and all those stories that you read and you bible studies and all that you start getting tested. So <laughs> I, I think for me, the faith walk became real when life became real and when you're alone yeah. and you don't have that support system being with you every single day. So yeah, when I moved to DC, things got real. And I, <laughs> I will never, I always tell people, and I, and, I, and I talk about this in my book, American Man as well, you know, I talk about the ideas of faith and manhood and what it means to me, but I'm not this type of person that, that is going to pretend to the audience at large that I'm this perfect Christian. And I think that is part of the gospel itself, is understanding that Christ paid it all because I'm imperfect. And anytime that we try to project ourselves as these perfect uh, beings, I think we take his glory away. Because mm. if we're so, if we have it all together, then he would have, he, he wouldn't need to pay it all on the cross for our sins. And so I think as I've grown older, I have accepted being this imperfect human and understanding that I'm striving to be more like him, knowing that I don't have it all together. And I think as a young Christian, we try, we try to, at least I did, I tried to pretend as if I had it all together when I didn't, you know? Yeah, well, and and I think too. I know for me, <laughs> when I was growing up, I always felt this pressure to be yeah. perfect. You know, when you're in church, it's like, no, you have to put your best foot forward. And it's like, look, we should always be trying to be like Christ. But when we make mistakes and we fail, hiding those things and pretending that they're not happening, that breeds more um, yeah. struggle and more problems, right? So I do think there's a culture of that. And and when we're honest that we're struggling with things and we're helping one another, it's it just, it's an important thing to be open and honest about all of that while again, still striving to be who God wants us to be. Do you find, do you find that it's a struggle in media with the attention and the fame to hold on to those things? I mean, how do you navigate that? Um, you know, I, I, I don't find it a struggle um, to hold on to who God has called me to be and be that person. I think the one struggle that that I often face in it is because I am I'm proud to be a believer. I'm 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 proud to represent the gospel. Is being so proud, but having your flaws and your mistakes then. Uh, broadcast it as well. So it's like, oh, he's a believer, but he made this mistake. And I'm like, yep, I pretty much did. Yep, he got a little <laughs> heated. Yeah, he may have used profanity and he kind of let it get the best of him. And I'm like, yep, I, I, I wasn't the best <laughs> ambassador then. And I think there's an automatic assumption. And, you know, some, some of it is actually... Um, um, helpful in a way because if if you are going to represent the gospel, you want to do your best to be the represent the best representation of Christ. But I think one thing that I found, and look, it's the same thing that I grew up with being a preacher kid as well. And it's like, okay, yep, I am, I am an ambassador, but I am also flawed as well. And the network has been great with letting me, you know, uh, go on and talk about the gospel uh, in 
and talk about my story. You know, my story is a gospel story because my mom got pregnant with me at 16 and my, my mom and dad made the decision to choose life. And so, you know, my whole entire life represents God's grace and his love and compassion and flaws and mistakes. You know, my parents made, um, you know, adult acts outside of marriage very early, but then they got married. You see what I'm saying? And so, um, you know, my whole and you life- you shared that. You you had your mom yeah. on the show, on your show a while back, and you, know, you told that story and it was a really yeah. powerful moment of when we make mistakes or things happen, following the right path. I mean, that's a testimony to your parents and to your life, is it not? Yeah, it, it totally is. And I think the the reason, I shared the story uh, for two reasons. For one, I was really upset with Janet Yellen saying that these mothers that have have these babies are unworthy and they can't do it. And then there's a second part of, you know, <laughs> wanted to ex- inspire that young mother to be that you can do it. Um, and then the third aspect of it is, is that sometime God takes these, you know, unfortunate situations, these sinful moments, uh, and he uses them for his glory. So I, I try to, I try to live that way too, man. Like I, like I said, I am proud to be a believer. I'm proud to share the gospel, but I don't want to ever give people the impression that, um, I'm perfect because I'm not. Yeah, no, absolutely. And being able to, again, have that honesty, I think it it's disarming to people too, because a lot of times when people present themselves as perfect, when they do make a mistake because we're humans, the rest of the world is looking at it and they're like, see, look, you know, they're, exactly. they're bad or they're not living up to it. It's like, well, look, we're all humans. We all make mistakes. The difference is when you're a Christian, you're acknowledging that you're aspiring to be more like Bingo. God. You're aspiring to be better, right? And yeah, that's, that's the thing we need to make sure people understand when they when they're not in the Christian fold, right? That they get that. So being it, honest helps it, do that. It's so true. And to build on that, also letting people know you can't do this by yourself. Like there's a, there's a source for power. And I think so often, you know, my generation, we, we get ourselves in a lot of trouble now because, you know, we're all about self now, it seems like. And uh, we put it all on our, on our own shoulders. And I think the reason why there's, to one point, there's so much social anxiety and rates of depression is because we feel like we have to do it by ourselves. There, there is nothing that some, you know, these young people believe that it's greater than themselves. There's nothing supernatural. There's nothing that they believe that is, you know, all powerful. And so I hope to share with my generation that there is someone that is, knows all, that has all the power, that can change your situation, or can choose not to change your situation and it be okay. Um, yeah. And that's, I think that's, that's, that's the gospel. Yep. There's a bigger plan. We can't always see it and we've got to trust and that's important. Now I want to, I wanted to pivot mm-hmm. to something that I think is really interesting that Fox and friends has been doing, which is this concert series with Christian artists, which is pretty cool to see. I mean, you've had a lot of people on, uh, there's a couple more concerts coming up here. Um, what's it like to kind of, to be able to be on a show where, where that element is there, you know, that faith element is there. Um, of course there's a, mostly secular content and then you have that. So what has that been like? Yeah. So my pastor's son, uh, Anthony's, uh, Anthony Evans is actually going to be performing this week, um, for our, our faith and friends, uh, series. You know, the most interesting part about this, so one of my producers is the one that coordinates all of um, um, our Faith and uh, Friends series. And believe it or not, he's actually Jewish. And the story about Ari is that uh, his mom and uh, his dad introduced him to uh, Whitney Houston's mom's church in New Jersey. And so he has this... uh, he grew up with this appreciation for gospel and Christian music. And so he's been coordinating these series and, and you've been able to see the different um, aspects of the church. Um, <laughs> I was <laughs> texting my co-anchors the other day because Ricky, Ricky Dillard was uh, doing the Faith and Friends series. And it is a traditional, you know, black church choir that is, you know, performing. And they go, is that how it is in church every Sunday? And I'm like, <laughs> every Sunday, <laughs> every Wednesday, probably every Thursday. And it's much more, you know, 
upbeat and it's moving. And then you got your traditional Christian music, Crowder. You got, you know, Passion. You got, you know, all these other. Matthew and West. Have, yeah. Matthew West. And, you know, you know, even Anthony, who is like more CCM, but can also do guest, uh, gospel music. Um, I think it's beautiful, man, that we have brought that um, to uh, Fox and because they do that, you know, we have our summer concert series that is much more secular and you get all that, but we also have our faith and, yeah. you know, um, I, I, th I think seeing it all and having a platform for it all, I think it's been some of the most, be most beautiful conversations, not, and I, we've had people from our audience messages about them crying on Sunday morning. People that haven't been to church in a while, but we're bringing church to them in their living room. And, and a diverse, and a diverse. I really like what you were saying there, you know, because a lot of people. I mean, what it, was it MLK who said that Sunday morning is the most segregated time, you know, yeah. uh, of the week? And it's like, yeah. I mean, a lot of people are not exposed to other types of worship outside of their church, right? So when you have all these different types of music coming in in the Christian realm, we're all part of the same family, right? Um, that's pretty powerful to, to have that. And you don't see that many places. So that's actually a really unique piece of what you guys are doing there. Yeah, I, I, th that's what I love about it. And, you know, it's, it's giving, you know, obviously, it's not a full ser service. It's, it's, you know, these segments are probably like five to six minutes. Um, but I think the story in that is God doesn't need a lot of time, like to make an impact and to look what I, I always tell people when I am sharing the gospel with amongst friends or, you know, colleagues or, you know, just people I just may, I'm not trying to go in there and, you know, harass them and try to, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I always tell people, you know, God doesn't need any help because he doesn't, you know, I'm hoping that what they see in my life and the little morsel that I share with them, uh, can help change their life and say, Hey, I don't know what it is. There's something different about this guy in some way. There's a little something thing that I want to know more about. Well, that's Christ. And I think that's what these, the, the summer, you know, faith and friends series is doing is, is just sharing just a little bit with the audience. So they want, want more. Yeah, no, I love that. All right. Final question for you. Cause I want to make sure we talk about this. You mentioned it before, but American man speaking the truth about the war on masculinity, your book uh, that came out last year. What, why did you write this? What is your hope for the impact of it? Yeah. So, uh, I wanted to inspire the traditional man and the <laughs> traditional woman to let them know that, Hey, first of all, it is okay. You're not doing anything wrong. Society has failed us right now. And I think in a lot of cases, you know, as my pastor says, as men are supposed to lead the family, lead the households, that if there is uh, something wrong with society, then man, men are to blame right now and that we haven't taken our positions in, in society. But there also is this element of toxic masculinity that the left has been talking about. And I kind of destroy some of the stuff that they're talking about in the book. I tackle it head on. But I also interview all these men that a lot of us know that believe in the same principles that we are. And we kind of defend it as well and talk about how we can be better. And it's also a guide map. Uh, we don't bash womanhood. We appreciate womanhood, but we also appreciate manhood and we need both. And honestly, you know, a lot of these principles come from faith. They're biblical principles. I don't think that the Bible should change. I think the Bible is clear. God has a you know, my pastor always says there's two answers to every question. There's a God answer and then there's everybody else's answer. And everybody <laughs> else is always wrong and God is always right. And I lay that out in the book. I love that. I love that. Well, Lawrence, I'm going to have you back again. There's a lot more to talk yeah, about, dude. but I appreciate you giving me so much time. It was great to catch up with you today. You got it, brother. Talk to you soon.